Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, so, you saw those clips earlier. I went to a bookstore yesterday. Um, that means I got some books. So, um, yeah, I will talk about some of the books that I hold yesterday, um, right after I finish talking about the books I've already read recently. And in this video, I will talk about two books. So one of those books I didn't particularly enjoy, but another one was something that um, I had a, a an interesting relationship with. So I, I can't wait to talk about that. But first, let me start with um, Hell of a Book by Jason Mott. I don't have the book with me because um, I'm in KL now and I left that book back in, back in my hometown, Kuching. Um, and yeah, I, this was the book that I thought that I was going to like, but unfortunately I just didn't particularly like it. Um, and this, this book centers around uh, a nameless author who is on his book tour promoting his uh, latest novel, which is very well received, very popular, a lot of people loved his novel. Um, and so he's just being a very popular author um, and he's giving talks, signing books and all those things. Um, and while all of these is, uh, all of these are happening, um, he is constantly approached by a mysterious, supposedly invisible black boy. Um, and we as readers we are one we, we we wonder who this black boy is now while this author is on his book tour um around that time was also uh the peak of black lives matter um rally protest and that sort of becomes the background uh, um, of this novel and the author, this nameless author, being a black man himself. Um, what's interesting about him is that he, as a character, is introduced as someone who is not really aware of his own so-called blackness. He's not really aware of his own um, uh, experience living as a black man. And uh, because he ends up becoming a popular author, a lot of people want him to um, to talk about that experience, especially with Black Lives Matter happening in the background. And yet he is struggling with that. And um, we would eventually learn what really is going on with this author. Um, what is up with this boy who keeps on approaching him? Um, is it something that is supernatural or is it something that's just really weird? Um, and so this book is one that combines, um, I would say, uh, a few different elements such as um, surrealism um, or at least something that resembles surrealism. Um, a, a lot of uh, commentary on uh, social justice as well, especially uh, uh, relating to uh, uh, black people in America. Um, it also incorporates humor and at the same time um, it has this really interesting narrative style in which um, we see the story or rather we see uh, different stories. The main story, of course, involves this nameless author on his book tour, but there is also a story of, um, of a boy growing up as a, as a, as a black boy um, and how 
his parents、uh, teach him、uh, how to navigate his life as a black boy. How exactly? I don't want to spoil it with that, but、um, it is something that is going to、um, be kind of recurring in this novel also. So, with that said, this book would have been something that I am very interested in. You know, it 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 combines a lot of these different things, and also the fact that.、Um, There is some kind of、um, flippant tone with this book that I usually like. You know, I usually like books that are、um, kind of flippant or、uh, somewhat irreverent in some ways. And indeed, this book really does feature a bit of those um, those um, flavors. But At the end, I didn't particularly enjoy it for a few reasons. Now, the first reason is that I felt like this book was a bit too preachy.、Um, a lot of、um, a lot of its writing focuses on、um, the messaging that the writer intends to convey, and I thought that it was it was done in a、um, Fairly heavy-handed way that the story ends up becoming relegated to second place.、Um, so it's more like message first and then story later. And I thought that that was kind of distracting. And honestly, I when I read novels, I always go for the stories.、Um, so when that happened, it really just kind of makes the story feels less impactful. Um, now the second thing that I didn't particularly enjoy was how、um, how the tones were managed in this book. Now、um, there is a portion of this book that is written in a fairly flippant and humorous way, and that would be the portion involving the author. Who is promoting his book tour and how he how he is like freaking out over seeing this strange black boy keep, who keeps on see、um, approaching him and and communicating with with him and all that、um, and and also basically his experience promoting his book how people respond to it his own thoughts all of these tend to have a bit of this kind of、um, yeah irreverent style. Um, but then there is also another plotline、um, involving other characters, such as、um, a black boy somewhere else. Now, whether this black boy and the black boy that the、um, author keeps on seeing, whether they are the same person, well, you're just gonna have to read to find out. You know, it's not gonna be a straight answer for me.、Um, yeah, but but that. Part of the、um, that part of the novel is written in a more serious tone, and these two portions, these main two portions, they are sort of arranged in kind of alternate way that you end up having a、um, an arrangement of 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 tones that is like. Flippin' and serious, flippin' and serious, flippin' and serious. It's and somehow in this book it just did not work for me because I felt like the flippin' part sort of diminished the gravity of the serious part, whereas the serious part, the tone, sort of、um, reduced the impact. Of the more humorous part, and so it ends up feeling kind of awkward for me.、Um, so yeah, in that case,、uh, in the case of this book,、um, the tone did not work. <laughs> so、um, yeah, I was I was a bit disappointed. 
because there were there were a lot of things in this book that um, could have worked so well for me. Um, now another thing that also didn't really work. Number three is is how this book feels predictable somewhat. Um, when when we are um, shown that this nameless author has uh, has a certain mental condition it sort of gives us a clue as to what is going on now it is not going to be 100% straightforward of course um, especially in regards to you know this this mysterious black boy but at the same time, it does feel a little bit predictable. It's predictable in a more convoluted way. Um, and when that revelation happens, I did not feel very satisfied. I did not feel that there was something fresh in how the story was told. So it didn't feel like um, I was reading something new and therefore I didn't particularly enjoy that part. Now talking about the mental health aspect of this book, this author, this nameless author character also has also is said to have some kind of mental condition but it's not explicitly mention what it is which i think is 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 uh is something positive i i like that this novel this uh the author of this novel chose not to explicitly mention what the mental health condition is but i also felt like mental health condition of this character is not really well utilized as in it, it is not really um, used to further explore what is really going on in this book and while I think it is good that this so-called condition remains as a vague mental health condition there is nothing that is much deeper than that I think it was just a mental health condition and it may or may not have something to do with whatever that was going on in this book but that's it so I didn't feel very satisfied by that also anyway those are my thoughts for hell of a book what do you guys think about this book do you enjoy it <laughs> let me know in the comments below now for the second book that I want to talk about I have it right here. This is Jane Smiley's Moo. Finally, I finished this book after more than one month. I think close to two months. Okay, maybe maybe not really two months, but um, yeah, more than a month, definitely. I finally finished this book. I kept on mentioning I, I am still reading this book in the past um, few recent reads videos. So now I finally finished with it. And <coughs> I have a bit of a complicated relationship with this book. I ended up giving it four stars, uh, four out of five. And um, but at the same time, that also made me realize how reductive a star rating system is because my feelings towards this book is definitely much more complex than just a simple 4 out of 5 rating. So uh, very briefly what is Mu about? So Mu is a um, is a story that takes place sometime in the um, in, in 1989 to 1990 um, set in a set um, at a midwestern um, university 
called Mu University, and this Mu University is an agricultural university, and it features a large cast of characters, um, including some students, and also um, faculty members, and as well as um, administrative staff. I would say that I sort of divide this book into two um, two parts. One is uh, the story that relates more to the students, and another one is the story that involves the faculty and admin staff members. And I would say that the story involving the um, uh, the faculty and admin members are much more interesting than the ones that revolves around the students even though if all of those stories they would eventually tie um, with you know with with, with each other um, this book has a particular plot in it that is kind of I would in my opinion is a little bit subtle um, but the gist of it is about the politics in academia and how different members, especially those who work in academia, um, have their own agenda, have their own personal interests, ambitions, motivation, desires. Uh, and their own personal search for fulfillment. And Mu is pretty much about how all of these characters have these things, but how these things, how their desires and their motivation and ambition and goals would eventually clash with each other, which would end up leading towards drama. <laughs> um, so what drama is happening in this book? Well, I entered this book blind, so I'm not going to talk about what drama it is, but it certainly is a very interesting kind of drama that involves professors and chairpersons and, um, you know, all those members, the management staff of a university. Now, when I first began reading this book, I thought that it was very slow. Um, and I struggled a bit, especially with the first two parts. Now, this book has five parts. It's divided into five parts. The first two parts, at least, was most, were mostly devoted to introducing to us who these characters are individually. And because there are so many characters in here, it's sometimes it's, it, it was a bit difficult for me to keep track of who's who. And, uh, you know, I remembered after reading like 20 chapters, I kept on seeing new names, new characters. And we would eventually revisit those characters again, later, you know, again and again and again. All of them would, ha would appear again later in the book. But when I see those characters, some of those characters again, I would forget who those people are. <laughs> so that was my struggle with the book. Um, and because the earlier part of this book focused on introducing these characters individually in a very detailed way, we, you know, we wouldn't be seeing a lot of action in terms of plot yet. In fact, the more exciting action, in my opinion, is, uh, is in part number four. Now this is 
where things kind of get really interesting for me. Once I reached part number four, suddenly I felt very much invested in this book. And I thought it was really fortunate that I persevered because I remembered when I was in part two, I kept on thinking about DNFing this book. But I didn't because there was something about this book that just kept me hooked. Certain parts were so tedious to read, but I was somewhat hooked to this book. And I just wanted to keep reading about it. And it was up until part number four when the when the um academia political drama involving some grant some money and some um some 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 external political repercussions <laughs> happening that was when much of the time that i spent on reading about the so-called introductions of these characters at the first you know, second two, first two parts, um, paid off. So, I was, when I finished this book, I was thinking about how I should, con you know, how, how, how I should consider, how I should judge this book. Uh, should I put it at three stars? Because I would say, um, the beginning of this book was so tedious that I would sometimes forget the characters and I would probably just give those parts two stars but then at the end of this book certain parts were so interesting so engaging it was like four to five stars so perhaps on average mathematically it should be three stars but at the same time and I was also thinking it just didn't feel like a three star book to me it was more like a four star which doesn't really make sense you know if you want to be like super logical about it but again you know feelings aren't necessarily logical so I went with my feelings for this book and I put two stars it, no four stars at the end because there is another thing that um, motivated me to rate this book that way and that is when I finally finished this book because I've spent so much time reading this one slowly it felt like I was watching some kind of show maybe that runs for um, one or two seasons and by the time I got to the end it felt like I, I, I have reached the series finale and it's like there's this kind of melancholy that I felt because it's as if I've known these characters for a while now and once this book ends I'm not going to see them again and so I felt kind of sad because of that and I thought I've never had other books that gave me this kind of feelings before I mean maybe I maybe I have had some of, you know some books that gave me that experience before but I I just don't remember <laughs> and that was one of the strongest impressions that Mu gave me, you know, the, that that emotional response that occurred in me when I finished this book. I never thought I would feel that way because usually when I finish a book, I would be like, "Yay, I'm done. I'm happy," you know, accomplishment. But with this book. Yes, there was a bit of that sense of accomplishment of finishing a book, but at the same time, I, I felt sad. So, yeah, I would say bravo <laughs> for, 
for this book, you know. Um, I would definitely try more Jane Smiley. I actually, I actually tried some luck ones, but for some reason I just could not get into um, Jane Smiley's writing in that book, and I DNF it. Uh, but it was only a few pages. At the same time, I was probably kind of stressed out about work at the time. That was like a few, few years ago. So I might try it again. Um, but yeah, this book was good. If you're looking for um, a, uh, a book about, um, you know, university politics, uh, a book that is set in a university campus. It's about students and professors and, um, you know, uh, admin staff. <laughs> um, go ahead and try this book. I also realized one thing. When I was reading this book, I honestly really do enjoy reading about horny professors <laughs> it's part of the drama in this book it's part of that whole um, um, category of the search of fulfillment and desire the very human search for these things and some of them are shown through how some of the faculty members are really sexually driven. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of amusing as well and how those things just overlap with their professional ambition also. I, yeah, I hope I pique your interest for this book. Definitely give it a, a try. Now, so those are all of the books I read and uh, yeah like I told you I was going to mention some of the books that I hold well three books that I hold from the bookstore so the bookstore's name was Dokusho so what really happened was um, and this was how I usually uh, this was how I bought these books and like how I usually buy the books from Dokusho. Uh, first, I would um, see the latest post on Instagram, and then after that, I would contact um, uh, that account through DM. And then, um, referring to some of the latest posts, I would say, oh, Is this book still available or not? And if it's available, then I say, Yes, I want to buy it, and then I'll complete the payment online. And so, I just went to that store and pick up the books. So these are the books that I picked up. Three of them. Um, okay, the first one is by Hungarian author Imre Kertes. This is Fatelessness. I've heard about this book before, um, but it's kind of difficult to find at least a used copy of it. Um, and I find that the premise is interesting. I think that it, it, it promises a lot of um, I would say um, a, a, a more specific kind of experience um, and just kind of based on the um, description at the back of this book um, at the age of 14 George Kovish is plucked from his home in a Jewish section of Budapest and without any special malice placed on a train to Auschwitz he does not understand the reason for his fate he doesn't particularly think of himself as Jewish and his fellow prisoners who um, um, theory, his lack of Yiddish, keep telling him, you are no Jew. In the lowest circle of the Holocaust, George remains an outsider. Um, so, I'm just going to leave it at that. I find that to be kind of interesting i want to see how that um how that develops in this novel now the second one is uh no no boy by john okada and this author is a name that i've only heard of recently i think as recent as last year 
and um, his books have been considered as um, a modern classic of uh, Asian American literature, um, which I think is a category that is not very um, widely talked about, I think. And, uh, and apparently, uh, this author, when he died, um, he died uh, with this, uh, without his books becoming very well known. Um, so yeah, basically he died with his books still sort of obscure, which I think is a little bit tragic. Um, and the recognition that he got would be something that, that was more recent. And uh, and honestly, the back of this book does not really talk about what <laughs> what this book is about. And when I when I got this book, I I also didn't know what the story is about. Uh, and we're just gonna leave it at that because that is usually how I read novels. Um, for many of the novels I read, I don't know what it is about completely. So we're just gonna leave it at that. Okay. And the last one is by Amelie Nothomb. This is uh, The Life of Hunger. And this is interesting in the sense that it is a fictional memoir. Um, there is a description here, but I don't think I would want to read so much. Uh, just very briefly, in a wistful, funny, clever, and eccentric fictional memoir, Amélie Nothomb casts herself as hunger. Hunger for experience, hunger for life, hunger for sweetness, and in what is the book's heart, hunger for hunger. Her teenage years during which she was afflicted by acute anorexia. So this one is kind of interesting because I read her book, uh, The Book of Proper Names, and that one also dealt with um, eating disorder. And I think that book also had some um, uh, biographical element to it as well. So it will be interesting to see what, um, what detail what this book offers. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention um, for Faithlessness. So, Faithlessness was, was originally written in Hungarian, and this was translated into English by Tim Wilkinson. And The Life of Hunger was originally written in, Sp uh, in Spanish, in French, and this one was translated into English by Adriana Hunter. So, those are the three books that I got from Dokusho, and now on to what I'm currently reading. I got The Leopard by Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa. Um, I'm also still reading LA Woman by Eve Babbitts. So these two books I brought with me from Kuching. Um, and they are not too thick, so it's not too heavy. Um, and I'm also reading this short book called your Name Shall Be Tanga by Cameroonian author Kalista Bayala. This book was originally written in French. It was translated into English by Mariole de Yacher. And um, just a little bit of something, something about this book. This is something that kind of intent for Shorty September. However, I don't think that this book is going to be a quick read because it is about something really difficult to read. Um, a lot of transgressive acts in here. It's about two women who are stuck in a prison cell because of some crime or whatnot, and one of the women is dying. Her name is Tanga, and she's narrating her life story to this other woman. And basically, her life story is something that is filled with so much horrible, horrible things since she was a kid. Um, just to mention a few, there would be a lot of prostitution, a lot of bad sex, sexual violence, um, bad, bad sex experience, you know, violence, assault. Um, 
and also incest. So yeah, a lot of really repulsive things happening in this book, which makes it quite a difficult read sometimes. But I would say I'm enjoying it at this moment. Um, enjoying it in the sense that the language, the writing, is sometimes astonishing. Anyway, those are all of the books that I'm currently reading right now. Uh, let me know what you are reading. Have you read any of these books? What are your thoughts about them? Or um, just pretty much, how's your day? <laughs> so um, that's all for now and I'll see you again in a new video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching and bye.